of Jesus' name on that first verse. Let's lift our voices this evening. All hail the power of Jesus' name. Let angels prostrate fall. Bring forth the royal diadem and crown him Lord of all. Bring forth the royal diadem and crown him Lord of all. Ye chosen seed of Israel's race, ye ransomed from the fall. Hail him who saves you by his grace and crown him Lord of all. Hail him who saves you by his grace and crown him Lord of all. Oh, that with yonder sacred throng we at his feet may fall. We'll join the everlasting song and crown him Lord of all. We'll join the everlasting song and crown him Lord of all. So great to see everyone this evening. Just before we open in prayer, just need to mention a couple things tonight. Please pray for pastor and preacher. Lastly, right at this moment, they're at the, the Mr. Lawrence's funeral and uh, they are preaching as we speak. And uh, there's some special circumstances there that we won't get into, but they need prayer and pray for salvation. Pray for the other family members and relatives as the gospel is preached at that funeral and it's going on uh, right now as we speak. So that's why you don't see pastor up here this evening, but we have a blessing tonight. Uh, we get to hear brother Paul uh, preach to us here in just a few moments. And so I'm looking forward to that. I need to mention a couple things there. We have several things that we need to be in prayer about. Um, we need to pray for the family of Harold Lawrence, of course, and um, also the family of Kathy Smith. This would be Peggy and Connie's sister and Kim and Joshua Free's aunt. So we need to pray for that family. Another family as well that we need to pray for, and we had their funeral uh, earlier this week, but the family uh, of, of uh, Joshua Bolden, and uh, this would be Mike and Sherry Bolden's son. So please pray for them and for that funeral. We, there was a, we had a sweet time at that funeral the other day. Uh, please keep them in your prayer. Uh, Brother Ken Campbell had so shoulder surgery, so we need to pray for him. Brenda Bacon uh, had some sinus surgery. Earl Bridgman is in the VA uh, tonight. I spoke to him earlier this afternoon. He has some health needs. Uh, if you would, please keep him in your prayers. We're also praying for Brother Daniel's mom. She's recovering uh, from uh, uh, some cancer that she had, Miss Beth McMurray. We're, uh, let's pray also for Tim Gibbs. Gilly. Uh, this would be Linda Willis's sister-in-law. She has some health concerns. Um, Linda Starnes, um, there's a, an 11-year-old with bone marrow treatments. Miss Debbie Mullins has taken treatments. Caleb Harless, we've mentioned him many times. The doctors still can't figure out what's going on with him. And so uh, entirely, they have some ideas and they're trying some things, but let's keep him in your prayer. Uh, Brother Billy Snodgrass is recovering from a broken femur. Uh, keep in mind several of those that we have that have cancer. Brother Mickey uh, Archer, uh, Kermit Pyle, um, Mike Russell, Debbie Deacons, Johnny Saylor, Pat Scalf, uh, and of course Debbie Mullins we mentioned also. Uh, Sherry Edens had surgery and is at home recovering. Linza Caldwell, Stacy's sister, is in Knoxville. David Houghton, this would be Donna Pruitt's son and son-in-law, finishing chemo. Carol Hayes with a knee recovery. And uh, just so many, so many. But we don't get discouraged because we know that God is the ultimate physician. I was talking with uh, Brother Earl earlier, and he he encouraged me. He said, he said, well, God made our bodies. He knows how to fix them. 
And, uh, and I couldn't help but agree with him. And he said, just pray that these doctors can figure it out, <laughs> is what he said. So uh, that's, that's, we know that God in, is in control with that. We have a special request tonight for Teresa Payne's father. The last I heard a couple hours ago, he is unresponsive. And um, so let's keep him in, in prayer. She asks that we pray for the family that uh, they would have the wisdom and the discernment to know what to do at this time. There's some decisions that they'll need to, to make. His name is Bobby Robinson. Many of you may, might, know, might know him, so we need to keep him in prayer. And then I was just handed a prayer request before coming to the uh, podium. Uh, Gerald Howell had two massive heart attacks. He's on life support, and this would be the father of Lori Hubbard. So we need to pray for him this evening. Our plate is full, but God is, he knows each and every one of these situations and he knows exactly what they need. He has a purpose in everything that he allows to happen. God does not create evil and wrong in our life. He allows, sometimes he allows it to happen. You know, you look at the Old Testament, the children of Israel, the times that, uh, there are many times where God lifted his hand of blessing and he allowed certain things to happen. And that doesn't mean that in these cases, uh, these folks were doing wrong. But God sometimes allow, allows things to happen in our lives. I've seen in cases like this where God loves, loves a relative so much that he uses something like this to bring him to Christ. Knowing that that person is saved and they're on their way to heaven. So you just never know. And so let's go to prayer. We'll pray for the service tonight. Looking forward to hearing from God this evening. Father, thank you so much for the opportunity that we have to mention your name and we have your ear. You have told us in your word that that is so. By faith, I believe it because you said it. Father, we've mentioned these names tonight. We have several families that are grieving there's a funeral that's going on right as we speak. I pray that you would anoint pastor and anoint preacher lastly right now. Holy Spirit of God, move amongst those people at that funeral. And I pray for salvation this evening. Lord, I pray that you'd be with us tonight. Holy Spirit of God, come by and visit us tonight. And I pray that you would, uh, uh, that you would bless us this evening, that you would be with us and that you would comfort those that need comforted. Heal those that need healed. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You may be seated. Just a couple announcements this evening. We have an outdoor event coming up on Monday, April 19th. The tickets are for sale back in that corner over there to my left. And uh, if you need some tickets, this is, this is a great opportunity to, uh, to purchase an inexpensive ticket for the purpose of of nudging somebody in a friendly way and saying, hey, I bought you a ticket. Uh, come join me. Um, the shearers from everything that I've understand, I've never heard them in person, but I hear that they're very entertaining while at the same time, they have an excellent way of presenting the gospel. So this is a perfect opportunity uh, to bring someone uh, to hear the gospel. And uh, uh, just a quick reminder, I've been asked to mention that um, we, we do not have very many door prizes, and we want to give away some more door prizes. Several have come in, but we don't have enough. If you can think of something that you might have at home that, uh, that you could bring, something that's not used, something that's new, sometimes we have something that we've purchased, and it's, it's been on the shelf or in the closet or in the garage, and you think it might be worthy of giving away, it might make somebody happy. Uh, uh, just talk to one of us or bring it by the office here and we'd be more than happy to take Or if you want to go and purchase something, um, you're welcome to do that. We will not say no. Amen. Ladies, spring event, when life gives you lemons, make lemonade. No, count it all joy, it says. I'm sorry. I was, I was getting carried away there. We have a guest, Miss Jennifer White who is the wife of a pastor in North Carolina. This will be April 24th at 5 p.m. Just sign up 
uh, right here in the hallway on the way out. The deadline is Sunday, uh, which will be this coming Sunday. So keep that in mind if you would. And then we have several things that are coming up. I won't take time to go through all of them. You have your bulletin. If you have any questions, uh, just ask us. But there's a lot going on, and uh, this is an exciting place to be. Amen? So while we remain seated, let's sing this next song, What a Friend We Have in Jesus. I'll ask you to stand for the second song, but be seated for this one. What a friend we have in Jesus. All our sins and griefs to bear. What a privilege to carry. Everything to God in prayer. Oh, what peace we often forfeit. Oh, what needless pain we bear. Oh, we do not carry everything to God in prayer. Have we trials and temptations? Is there trouble anywhere? We should never be discouraged. Take it to the Lord in prayer. Can we find a friend so faithful who will all our sorrows share? Jesus knows our every weakness. Take it to the Lord in prayer. Are we weak and heavy laden, cumbered with a load of care? Precious Savior, still our refuge, take it to the Lord in prayer. Do thy friends despise, forsake thee? Take it to the Lord in prayer. In his arms he'll take and shield thee. Thou wilt find a solace there. Let's all stand for this last song. There is a place of quiet rest near to the heart of God. There is a place of quiet rest near to the heart of God. A place where sin cannot molest near to the heart of God. Oh, Jesus, blessed Redeemer, sent from the heart of God. Hold us who wait before thee near to the heart of God. There is a place of comfort sweet near to the heart of God. A place where we, our Savior, meet near to the heart of God. Oh, Jesus, blessed Redeemer, sent from the heart of God, hold us who wait before Thee near to the heart of God. Thank you. You may be seated. As you're seated and Brother Paul comes to the platform, we're going to watch a missionary video this evening. Greetings from France. Uh, for those of you that uh, don't know us, uh, uh, we're Ed and Sylvia Christie, and uh, we've now been in France for 30 years. We were 20 years in a, in a work um, on one side of Bordeaux, and now for the last seven years, we're on the other side of Bordeaux 
in a ministry in a city called saint midar en -Jal. And um, for about six months, we only did uh, Sunday video meetings um, because of the virus. And now we've taken back up our services uh, since the beginning of September. And really the Lord uh, uh, surprised us by sending us um, a, a new family, a family of eight. And it's been a, a big encouragement for our, our little church. And I could say also we had another family start coming uh, uh, to our meetings uh, uh, during the summer, even though we weren't really meeting, they came to the church and we met them there and they started participating in our video conferences. So we, had a, we have a young couple now that's uh, uh, participating with us. And so we're, we're greatly encouraged by what God is doing. Uh, we cite that verse about God is building his church. And we really see that, that God is the one building the church in spite of uh, uh, this uh, disease and everything that's going around. God is the one who's still building his church. And uh, we're doing a few visits, but we find uh, evangelism is very much a challenge at this point. When we go out to visit people, often unsaved members of the family are there at the same time. And so we've had an opportunity to uh, share the gospel in that way. We have actually one lady who has come down with COVID. And so, uh, and she seems to be doing uh, okay with it. But we, we thank you for your prayers and uh, your support for us over these many years that uh, uh, you've been with us. And thank you very much. May the Lord bless you. Lord, wonderful, praise the Lord. He's on, isn't he? I'm on? Okay, praise the Lord. Well, it's good to be in the house of the Lord. Aren't you glad you're here tonight? Amen. I'm glad I'm here. I'm glad, as pastors are always saying, that, you know, it's just good to be in the house of the Lord, good to be in church, good to be here where we can open the Bible and study from the Word of God tonight. And uh, I'm just thrilled to... That God is so good to us, isn't he? God is so wonderful. And uh, I, I just stand amazed at how, how the Lord is, uh, <clears throat> he, just, he just does great things, doesn't he? He just does great things. So uh, he is good. My pastor told me, I guess 40 years ago, or over 40 years now, he said, Paul, when I first started preaching, I was called to preach October the 10th, 1976. And he said, just get in the pulpit and run to Jesus. Amen. <laughs> Talk about the Lord. Talk about Jesus. Amen. He is so good to us, isn't he? Uh, saved when I was younger. But uh, God has put us on the mission field and given us uh, a labor to do. And we continue doing that. We heard from Brazil today. And uh, they're still not having in-person, you know, services. Uh, but the pastor goes to the, he goes to the church and does it on video. And uh, he just, he said, everything's fine. It's just that they're not able to meet. The church is still doing great. And uh, we praise the Lord for that. Souls uh, trust in the Lord. Amen. Uh, I just, I just love to see people saved. Don't you? I love to see people saved and come to the Lord Jesus. Uh, it's amazing how you can take the Bible and and just sit down with someone and begin to share the gospel with them. And, and, you know, it just seemed like God just uses that word to pierce their soul and pierce their heart. And uh, I, I remember there in Brazil on different occasions, I wasn't really, really good in the language, but I could read. I could read some of it. And what I would do, I would just turn to 1 Corinthians 15 and just read. You know, read about the death, the burial, and the resurrection, and uh, a lot of people got saved. Amen. Just, you know, it's not me; it's the Word of God. It, that's what does work, and uh, we are trusting that to, to touch your heart tonight is is God's precious Word, and uh, we just rejoice in. It. I want you to open your Bibles to Romans, the Book of Romans. We're going to try to be in chapter six. <laughs> We're going to try to get there. So. Uh, but I'll keep my eyes on the time, and I really appreciate the pastor allowing me the privilege of uh, being back here 
up here this soon. I didn't think I'd be back here that quite this soon, but I, I praise the Lord. I love to preach, and uh, I said many years ago, I'd rather, I'd rather get up and fail for Jesus than I would to, you know, succeed for myself. Amen? And uh, praise the Lord. Chapter 6 in the book of Romans, okay? Chapter number 6 in the book of Romans. Uh, I had this little thing I, re I, I typed over several, several years ago. I wrote it down. You know, the grace of God is uh, it just unlimited. God's grace. And it's always, you know, God's grace is God's unmerited favor. God's grace. And you and I are here tonight because of His grace. It's the reason we're here, because of the grace of God. And uh, the Bible teaches us that, you know, for by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourself. It is a gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. The Bible says that we are His, cre uh, we're His creation. We're His workmanship, created in Christ Jesus under good works, which God had before ordained that we should walk in them. And I want to walk in those works, don't you? I want to do what God wants me to do. But the grace of God, I, it, I wrote this down. Grace is that work of God whereby he does the unexpected. Now, I don't know when you got saved. Maybe, maybe just a short time or maybe years. But did you expect to get saved when you got saved? Did you go to church to get saved? Uh, some people do. So I thought today, I said, well, you know, if there's anyone who wants to get saved right now and you don't want to wait till the invitation, you can come right now. Amen. I guarantee you've heard enough gospel to know if you're, if you're not a Christian, you know that the gospel of Jesus was saved. The unexpected uh, for the undeserving. God, that's the grace of God. Providing the unattainable, and that's what undeniable, unchangeable, and unable to pay for it. Amen. That's the grace of God, isn't it? That's the grace of God. Romans chapter number six. There are three words I want to use uh, in this chapter, and if you studied it, probably you've got, you know, you've got marks all in your Bible, and no doubt you've got these words already marked in your Bible. But the words are in verse number 6, knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him, that the body of sin might be destroyed, that henceforth we should not serve sin. Uh, and the other word is found in verse number 11. Likewise reckon ye also yourselves to be dead indeed unto sin, but alive unto God through Jesus Christ our Lord. And the third word is in verse number 13. Neither yield ye your members as instruments of unrighteousness unto sin, but yield yourself unto God as those that are alive from the dead and your members as instruments of righteousness unto God. Three little words. That, uh, and and we'll try to help us understand the reason Paul put this to the Roman believers Oh, the reason he's saying this to them uh, is because in chapter number 3 of Romans, the Bible says that the righteousness of God is manifest without the law, being witnessed by the law and the prophets, even the righteousness of God which is by faith. So God is saying to those, uh, through the Apostle Paul, these believers, righteousness comes through faith. By the grace of God. Not by the law, but it's through faith. Then he goes on to tell us in chapter number 5 that we are not only saved by faith, but in chapter number 5 he says, Therefore being justified by, by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. So we are saved and we are justified by faith in Jesus Christ. I'm glad that uh, Paul talked about uh, there in chapter number 5, uh, 
He said, therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom also we have access by faith into his grace, wherein we stand and rejoice in the hope of the glory of God. We are saved, but we are also justified as if God has cleaned our, our, uh, our record. And one said just as if we've never sinned, but no, we did sin, but God cleansed it. Amen. God cleansed it. He justified us, and we're justified by the grace of God, the Bible says. We're justified by faith. We're justified by the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And God is letting them know, now you're, you're justified, you're saved, you're justified. But in chapter number 6, he is wanting us to do something. He is wanting the believers there uh, to exercise these three words, know, reckon, and yield. Uh, look what he says in verse number 1 of chapter number 6. Uh, what shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? We that are saved, we that are born into the family of God, he's, he's asked them a question. Are we to continue that grace may abound? God, help me, what does it say? God forbid. We're, we're not to continue. We are to uh, how shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? Thank God for the new birth. Amen. Thank God for we're not part of that. And I'd like for us to see that tonight. God has put us, thank God, in the body of Christ. He has justified us. And therefore you and I by God's grace uh, we are to walk in newness of life. I like walking with God, don't you? Near to the heart of God. Uh, I remember when I was younger, my hair used to be black. You wouldn't believe that, but it did. But uh, amen, brother, amen. Uh, I was getting ready to go to Brazil. And, of course, a lot of, uh, you know, anxiety of going to another country, taking my family, taking our three boys to, to another country. And I spent quite a bit of time with the Lord. And I remember one evening I was, I was praying up in, in West Virginia where uh, my home, home place, old home place, there's a like a little two mountains come together and had a place where you could go in there just a, a little, uh, you know, a creek that run out of the, out between the mountains. And I'd go up in that place and I'd, I'd get to talking to the Lord and I believe sometimes he let me get near to his heart. And one evening especially I said, Lord, I was just rejoicing in the Lord I was so happy in God. I said, Lord, please, would you just go home with me right the way we are right now? <laughs> this closeness, this fellowship. Would you just go down home with me? And, uh, of course, the Lord's always with us, right? He's always there. But I, I remember him speaking to my heart and said, Son, why don't you just stay a little longer? And I just went back in and stayed a little longer. And it was times like that that when I got on that plane and flew into uh, South America, uh, it just, it's just the Lord, isn't it? It's just the Lord, how he works things. Landed in a, it looked like a field, dirt runway, and, I, and, and my mind, my carnal nature said, man, what have you got your family into? But God had so burdened our hearts that it didn't matter too much about a, a dirt runway or get on prop planes and ride, and they just seemed like they just, 
just not going to make it, you know, just not going to make it all the way. My children sick and, you know, throwing up and on the plane. Uh, but I'm telling you, God, God is good. And Brother Dan, if I had another life to live, I'd sure go back and live it over. I'd go right straight back to Brazil, seeing all those people saved, and seeing the churches raised up, seeing the men that God gave. God raised these men up. And I was telling Sharon yesterday, and she agrees with me 100%. She said, you know, What God has done in Brazil is we're just so thankful that we can walk away we can, and we got men and uh, workers there that are doing a wonderful job for God, doing a wonderful job for the Lord. I got one assistant pastor that he, his name is Ronaldo. He, uh, I may have told you in the time past, but he, he memorized the scriptures and he had memorized, I don't know, 11 or 12 books in the New Testament. And when I was there the last time, he was, he was memorized the book of Proverbs. He was on chapter 17. Now, that's a hard one. So let me try to get, get through this, okay? What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin after what God has done for us? God forbid. How shall we? That really got a hold of my heart. How shall we that are dead to sin? How shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? It reminds me of Galatians chapter, chapter number 2. Galatians chapter number 2 and verse number 20. Galatians chapter 2 and verse number 20. Galatians 2, 20. I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. In the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. So the life that we have, how shall we? we, we we're brand new creatures in Christ. I'm crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. If any man be in Christ, you know the verse, right? If any man be in Christ, 2 Corinthians 4. 517, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things are passed away, and behold, all things are become new. If you read the next verse, it tells you that uh, those new things are of God. They're of God. So you and I that are saved, justified by the grace of God, how do we do this? How, how do we get there, Brother Dan? How do we get to this place that Paul's talking about? Know you not that so many of us, as we're baptized into Jesus Christ, we're baptized into his death. In other words, we were recognized when you and I got born again, uh, we was made part of the family of God, but you and I were baptized into, the, into his death. Now, that's something that God did. Amen. I, I didn't do that. God did that. Therefore, we are buried with him in, by baptism into his death, that like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life. One man said this. He said, that death 
of Christ paid the penalty, paid for our sins, the death on the cross. But we are to die to self. As a matter of fact, we already have. We just need to recognize that we are. That brother. We need to recognize that we are. Why? That's the reason he was talking about verse number five. Uh, For if we have been planted together in the likeness of his death, we shall be also in the likeness of his resurrection. We will recognize, as in Adam, if you read chapter number five, as in Adam, wherefore by one man sin entered into the world, and death by sin, and so death passed upon all of us. Amen. For all have sinned. We were plunged into the, uh, the sin of Adam. But because of the death of the Lord Jesus Christ, thank God we can be part of that resurrection. We can be part of the Lord. Union, our union with Christ. Deliverance from the power of indwelling sin by our union with Christ in his death and in his resurrection. Newness of life. Thank God. You know, we're brand new, aren't we? Brand new creatures. Amen. Brand new. I told a young man the other day, I said, you know, when you get saved, you get born again, you're new. You're new in Christ. You're new in Christ. I guess it's been about two or three months ago, I was talking to the, this, this man in there in Colonial Heights. His name was Sam. And talking to him about the Lord, and he thought that water baptism saved him. He thought that's what he all he needed. This man's 60 years old. He said, that's all I've heard all my life is you get baptized, you get saved. You know that. And after a while explaining to him, explaining to him from the scriptures that that does not save you. Water baptism does not save you. You've got to be saved by the blood of Jesus Christ. That's what cleanses your sins is the blood of the Lord. And, uh, and I loved what he said. After conversing with him for a while, here's the words that come out of his mouth. He said, well, what must I do? <laughs> and I explained to him, well, Marty, what do you need to do? Amen. And he asked the Lord to save him. What must I do? You've heard those words before? We are in Christ. We are new creatures in him. But Paul was talking here about being delivered from the power of sin. We've already been delivered from the penalty of it. He said, knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him. He wants us to know that. He wants us to recognize that we are dead in Christ, but alive in God. Amen. Knowing this, that the old man is crucified. The old man is crucified. Delivered from the power. What does it mean to be dead to sin? By knowing the truth, which was uh, involved when we accepted Christ as our Savior, our union with Christ, our connection with Christ. We are connected with his burial and his, his death, the burial and the resurrection. Thank God for the uh, death of our Lord, and we were recognized with that death. I want to read to you Second Peter. Second Peter chapter number one. Second Peter chapter number one. Second Peter chapter number one verse uh, verse number two. Grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord. According as his divine power hath given unto us all things that pertain unto life 
and godliness through the knowledge of him that hath called us to glory and virtue, whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises, that by these ye might be partakers uh, of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. We have a new nature. We have a divine nature of God. And what God wants us to do, and what Paul's trying to tell these uh, believers in Rome, he says, now I want you to know that. I want you to recognize that that's what happened when you got saved. That when you uh, give your life to God, our union with Christ makes our salvation, our connection to the death, the burial, and the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. We need to know that happened. And God wants us to reckon it to be so. Verse number, verse number 11. Verse number 11. We are to, he talks about the old nature being, uh, we're crucified with Christ. Look with me in Ephesians, Ephesians chapter number 4, please. Ephesians chapter number 4. Ephesians chapter 4. We need to know that God has made a union between us in Christ. We've crucified the old man. Uh, look, uh, old nature, I, I must say. In Ephesians 4 and verse uh, verse 21. If, if so be that ye have heard him and have been taught by him as the truth is in Jesus, that you put off concerning your former conversation the old man which is corrupt according to the deceitful lust and be renewed in the spirit of your mind and that you put, uh, that you put on the new man which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. You know what God wants out of us? He wants us to know that, to know what happened, to recognize that, and to reckon it to be so. Look at verse number 11. It says, Likewise reckon ye also yourselves to be dead indeed unto sin, but alive unto God through Christ Jesus our Lord. We need to not only know that, but we need to recognize that. Our union with Christ released us from the penalty of sin. And here, God wants us to be released from its power. Likewise, reckon dead to sin does not mean that sin is dead. If you got up this morning, which you did, amen, you're here, you got up. We know that uh, it's still there, isn't it? But God wants us to recognize what happened and reckon it so. Reckon it so. And the apostles, uh, he does not say that sin is dead uh, to us, but that we in Christ are dead to sin. Amen. I'm glad of that, aren't you? We continue, the word means continue reckoning ourselves to be dead to sin. Every day by faith. Reckon is an attitude of faith, not feelings. It's an attitude of faith based on what God said and not what we think. Based on what he wrote down here. And God wants us to do that. He wants us to reckon that to be so. Reckon it to be so. You have the same battles that, that I do. We, we battle every day. But when we accept the fact, I mean, it is a fact that we're dead to sin. We're dead. And God help us to be 
reckon that to be so. Faith is to conclude. Uh, faith is to, is to conclude about ourselves what God has declared about us. Not what we think or what we feel. What God has declared. And I tell you, he's declared us justified. He's declared us righteous in his eyes. And God wants us to walk like that. How shall we continue in sin? That grace, God forbid, we're not going to, amen? We're going to live for God. We're going to live for the Lord. Reckon it to be so. And then the last word, and I've got just a few more minutes, okay? The last word, it says in verse number 11, it says, Likewise reckon ye also yourselves to be dead indeed unto sin, but alive unto God through Jesus Christ our Lord. Let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body that you should obey in the lust thereof. God, he says in verse 13, Neither yield ye your members as instruments of unrighteousness unto sin, but yield yourselves unto God as those that are alive from the dead and your members as instruments of righteousness. Members. Members. Our members, our feet, our hands. Wouldn't it be something if, if, if God controlled our, uh, if God made our members, you know, come to church when it was time to come to church? Wouldn't it be something if you, if you, Legs just start moving and toward the house of God. <laughs> no, he wants us to yield our members to do that. Yield our members to the Lord. Yield. A deliberate choice based upon our position in Christ Jesus. A deliberate choice to live for him and to... Uh, our union, our position in Christ Jesus, our union with him in order to be used of God. Romans chapter number 6. No, reckon, and yield our members to the Lord Jesus and let God use us. It's a daily, it's a daily thing that we must do as God help us to uh, give ourselves to him we're saved, amen, we're justified by faith, uh, we've uh, names written down in heaven, but God wants us to know these facts about what took place when we got saved. And we need to take those facts and not only know them, but reckon them to be so, that these facts, thank God, can help us to be a servant of God. Amen. I'm not there. But I'm still, every day, every day, giving myself to God and praying and spending time in the Word of God. I want to be used of God, don't you? Uh, God's uh, put some things on my heart that, uh, you know, and this year's already getting started and not some things I want to do and uh, things I want to uh, pray about uh, this church, bringing people in, bringing people in and seeing people. I love to sit full with you. I love to sit filled up every service. Brother Herman, he could, uh, he, he preached to us every service, I guarantee you. If we get, get them out here, get it filled up. So God help us tonight to give ourselves to him and uh, let him use us. Let him use us in, the, uh, in his work. And uh, we want to have her to play. Brother, you want to? Brother John, you want to? Okay. Amen. Let's stand to our feet just for a word of prayer, please. And uh, Lord, help us to uh, give our all to Jesus. Amen. If the uh, Lord spoke in your heart tonight, maybe. Uh, I know God wants to use all of us. That's for sure. And... Uh, I pray God to help us to be usable for God and for his glory. And uh, maybe God speaking to your heart about just, just surrendering to God. Just saying, Lord, here am I. Here am I, Lord. Ever what you want me to do, ever what you want me to uh, 
be a part of. Amen. Amen. Go ahead. Amen. 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 God spoke to your heart tonight. Just obey the Lord. Obey the Lord. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Yes, Lord. Amen. Please, oh God, I pray. Amen, Lord. Thank you. Amen. Amen. I want to go with him all the way, don't you? All the way. All the way. Surrendering our all to the Lord and letting him use us for his glory and honor. Amen. 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 If God spoke to your heart tonight. Just You can do it here. You can do it in your, in your pew. But that heart, just surrender that heart to the Lord. Amen. Yes, Lord, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Amen, Pastor. God bless you. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. You may look this way. Somebody has wisely or wonderfully said the greatest ability is availability. You want to avail ourselves of the Lord. So where am I? Lord, send me. You say, you may, I may not be much, and none of us are, but uh, remember the equation is all God, not us. So praise the Lord, Brother Paul. Thank you for preaching for us, and um, thank you for uh, being here, being faithful, and preaching. And, of course, I just got back from the uh, service for the Lawrences. Thank you for being here. And, uh, you know, I, I hesitate to make the statement I'm going to make because it will sound condescending, and I don't mean that at all. I grew up in a church uh, much, much smaller than this, but I, I passed the church uh, on our way back. Uh, Amy and I, and uh, the church was size-wise, the building's wise, about the size of this. And I, I, I counted, you know, you're a preacher, you keep on counting and um, people. And at that time, I counted cars. I couldn't see the people, but there was four cars out there. And uh, you say, oh, isn't that sad? I, I, don't, I don't like to dwell very long on it because um, then you get big-headed and then you start thinking you are something, which none of us are. But um, you understand that I just caught the tail end of that and what Brother Pritchard was preaching and speaking about, just surrendering ourselves to the Lord. And, uh, you know, the first step is just to be somewhere where you can hear his voice. And I know you can hear his voice. Uh, I've heard people say, oh, preacher, I can hear the God much better in the tree stand than I can here. And I said, don't, don't, don't give me that, you know. <laughs> I halfway agree at first, and I say, I understand that. But we want to be listening to the Lord. Thank you for being in church tonight. It's a joy to be here. I hope that you're excited about being here. The young people over in the classes and, uh, and te young, the youth and all that, but uh, what a joy to be in church. So uh, before we head out, we'll just uh, tell you that the ushers will be back there at the back, we'll take our normal Wednesday night offering. And uh, thank you so much for uh, being here this evening. You're dismissed. <music>